Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media this is a Triple N news i am nick nickum the topic today is is robin hood crushing and crumbling under crisis so let us begin with the feature presentation robin hood is a brokerage firm just like uh, fidelity e trade charles schwab and others this company was uh, started in april 18 2013 in Menlo Park California it employs approximately 1281 people estimated the value of 20 billion dollars interestingly this was started by two college classmates Vladimir Tenev and Beju Bhatt they also have robin hood snacks and uh, financial services uh, and here are the two young people who felt that the individual investors were not getting the same level field as the institutional investors and the hedge funds so they created an app where individual investors can get a lot of information and be in line with the institu- institutional investors to get the full advantage of trading and here's their website this is an investment investing for everyone and some of the highlights of this robin hood is uh, it it say you can invest any amount uh, you can build a balance in portfolio you can trade in real time and since this is an app which is available on uh, Google and uh, iPhone platforms so it's available practically on all smart devices as a result i see the millennials walking around uh, constantly looking at their apps and see oh I, how much money did i make today and how much money did i uh, lose and how much money i can expect to make tomorrow and in fact it has become so prevalent these millennials are walking around even at workplaces looking at and trading all hours they also have cash management you can trade stocks and bonds options gold cryptocurrency and, and the best part of this robin hood that attracted millions of millennials is that it is commission free so if you trade thousand shares of say for example apple which is a lot of money you have zero commission you can trade options also with zero commission so that kind of put breaks on the large firms like uh, charles schwab and fidelity which were kind of forced to drop their commissions to zero i mean i have fidelity account so i had charles schwab account i know i how much i used to pay like 50 70 100 dollars for option trades today you can trade those options on robin hood for zero commission how does robin hood make money well robin hood makes money not from your side but it makes money from the market makers to whom they direct their traffic so if i'm sending you you know millions of dollars of business i want you to give me some commission and that's how they make their money i was told they also have a credit card which you can use at 75000 locations and it is also protected by fdic up to 1.25 million dollars all right so your mastercard has a zero liability protection and Guess what Robinhood which just started in 2013 has now 13 million subscribers who are these subscribers most of these subscribers are millennials the average age of a subscriber is 31 years i mean there are other folks in their 60s and 70s just like me but the majority of them are less than 30 to 40 years old the advantage is they can do banking they can write checks they can pay their bills and they can maintain their savings account so it is much more than just uh, like a platform to trade stocks bonds and golds and options it is almost like total banking at the tip of your smartphone that's what's attracting all these millennials because they can be walking around they could be doing their work and during their lunch break they can trade a few stocks and make a few pennies and make up for the money they spent for lunch <laughs> that's that's another story but we want to see why is robin hood crushing and crumbling under crisis but i'm trying to give you a little background so you understand what is unique about robin hood and what 
went wrong in the last two weeks. And this is good for momentum trading, people who just like to look at graphs and how big is Robinhood compared to other firms like E-Trade or Charles Schwab. Robinhood has a, a capital of $20 billion, which is not small for a company that started just seven years ago. E-Trade had a capital of $600 billion. And if you want to compare it to the standard mega companies like Fidelity or Charles Schwab, Charles Schwab has $3.8 trillion assets. All right. Robinhood, the average account size is $1,000 to $5,000. That tells you a lot about the story about Robinhood. Robinhood is about empowering the individual investors to take charge of. It is a great learning lessons for young individuals because they can learn how the market functions, what are the driving forces, and they can test with small amount of shares like 10 shares or 15 shares or 100 shares and it helps them to learn so that uh, when they become more responsible when they become when they have a lot more money they can trade in a much more refined manner than if you, they were starting or giving it to a brokerage firm for a broker to manage their accounts and give 1.5 percent of their investment whether you make money or not i think those days are limited they are on the verge of ex extinction i should say because if you have a million dollars and if they wanted to give 1.5%, that's $15,000 for just telling you what to buy and what to sell without taking any risk on their own. Because if it goes down, you're going to lose money, but the agent makes the money. How many transactions did Robinhood make? In 2015, they had $500 million worth of transactions. And in 2019, they had $150 billion worth of transactions. This is exponentially growing with uh, almost 13 million millennial subscribers. Uh, and that's what's attracting because it was started by millennials for the millennials. And uh, I think everybody is learning and making money and being happy until this uh, GameStop fiasco came in and now all of a sudden uh, a can of worms are just spilling all over the country in all spheres politics banking sec regulations and that's why i feel robin hood is under a lot of pressure i don't know if it's crushing and crumbling but uh, it is under a lot of pressure and let me explain to you the game stop was shorted 140 percent of the available stocks in the market. They saw this as an opportunity to jack up the price and squeeze all these short sellers, namely the hedge fund emperors or the pirates who have been making money from all individuals just like you and me for generations, for decades. So these people got smart and they started to jack up the prices like here. It was like $3.60. It went to like, uh, uh, oh, what is this? It's like, uh, almost $50 from there it jumped all the way to $450 squeezing a lot of short sellers at the beginning of this uh, war there were 140 percent short sellers and as of uh, yesterday the short seller numbers had dropped to 39 percent but there are a lot of things happened in this one there are a lot of regulations that were brought to question and most importantly, a lot of millennials made a ton of money. Some of them like 100, 200 million dollars, while a huge number of them also lost money because if they didn't know when to get into the market and if they didn't know when to get out, they were sure to lose the money. So because of this, now they were looking at other stocks like Nokia, Blackberry, AMC to see if they can do the short squeeze like they did with the GME. But the GME stock was unique in, in that it was it came like a Pearl Harbor or 9-11. The hedge fund managers and all these big pirates were caught off guard. Anyway, as you can see, slowly the dust is settling down and the stock is uh, on the way to retrieve back 
to its levels today it is 20 dollars down uh, trading at 71 dollars so ke keeping this in background let us see how things have evolved over the last two weeks and how these things might threaten the very existence of robin hood and that's the main focus of this presentation last thursday robin hood said they're going to limit buys on companies they had like eight or ten companies listed the limit would apply to gamestop amc nokia blackberry and all this and they could not trade options they could not borrow money on margin to trade these stocks and they were also prevented from short selling the stocks the level which was equal to any investors just before this happened now all of a sudden changed this is what has furiated the individual investors but not only the individual investors it drew attention from all spectrum all spheres of the the government and regulators and all these things which we'll get into the individual investors were so restricted they could only trade one stock of gme and maybe 50 or 100 shares of amc as a result they were practically choked from doing any transactions some people who had the money could not get into the action but remember the hedge fund pirates or the emperors as i say they have no restrictions they can go out and buy million shares of stock and every time let me go back here every time the stock hits a high they can short sell it and they can continue to trap the prices that's what's happening in the last three four days i think so in the night they they themselves the pirates could be the hedge fund pirates could be jacking up the prices and when the market opens start dumping them and as a result a lot of individual investors are getting burned because they think oh the prices went up in the night so it should be shooting to the stars so let's get jump in and buy and this is where all the individual investors are getting really really hurt but now the things are sort of settling down but it's on the downward trajectory let's get back to what we were talking about Robinhood blocked a lot of investors in buying GME, which I talked about. The question is, does this amount to discrimination? And why did they restrict the individuals from shorting the stock where other big hedge funds were able to short the stock? Did Robinhood violate certain SEC rules? How can they create new rules in the middle of a game when the same rules don't apply to the big boys. The big boys, I'm talking about the hedge fund pirates, the emperors. You know, if they wanted to have these kind of breaks, there are circuit breakers for Dow Jones, S&P and Nasdaq. If S&P were to drop 5%, the stock market would stop selling S&P for five minutes or something like that. And there are certain breakers, if the market drops 10%, the trading will be stopped for the remainder of the day. So there should be some established guidelines and it should be explained to the investors when they sign up. They cannot make new rules in the middle of the game to suit Robin Hood and protect these uh, hedge fund pirates. That's what has furiated people. That's what has got Congress really angered and the SEC is looking into this, the Treasury Department is looking into that and the story continues. The individual investors felt like they were let down, cheated, restricted and Robin Hood was protecting the hedge fund managers. I mean these are all the speculations we read in certain forums. Individual investors lost ton of money because they could not try it in time and they could not recover some of their losses because they were allowed to trade one trade one stock, maybe 100 stocks, whereas the hedge fund managers had absolutely no limit as to what they can do. The question is, the steps that were taken by Robin Hood in the middle of a crisis, were they legal? Were they in line with the SEC regulations. 
and how can they make new rules in the middle of the game? Well, Robinhood was the, not the only company that uh, restricted trade. Even E-Trade and other companies restricted the number of shares that can be traded. But the restrictions that were put by Robinhood were far beyond uh, anybody else in terms of saying you cannot use margin to buy the stocks. You can only buy one stock. You can only buy one stock cumulative for the whole day. Those are draconian rules and that all those things will be coming into discussion in the courtrooms uh, during lawsuits. Uh, was Robin Hood under pressure from hedge fund managers? That is something which will come into light. Is Robin Hood turning into another pump and dump platform for the big hedge fund pirates? Do the individual investors know who the Robin Hood represents? Either you, the individual investor, who are 13 million of you, or is it uh, run by hedge fund managers who are funding Robin Hood? Well, NSCC, the clearinghouse, demanded $3 billion in cash to increase their regulatory capital requirements. Robin Hood was able to raise this money. But remember, where is the money coming from? Not from the individual investors majority of the money is coming from big firms. So again, does Robin would have a vested interest in these big firms who are trying to bail Robin Hood out? You have to think from all directions. I have nothing against Robin Hood. I mean, I use Fidelity, I trade daily. So it's, I am familiar with day trading or momentum trading. Here's another interesting thing. Robin Hood app on Apple and Google were getting tens of thousands of negative comments and Google has the audacity to delete thousands of negative comments. This is where I think the high tech is taking charge of individual, individual human rights. This is where I think the high tech needs to be disciplined. They cannot pick and choose what they want to display. They cannot pick and choose what they want to delete. This is an infringement on the First Amendment right. Google has no business deleting negative comments while keeping uh, positive comments. But remember, during this fiasco, this Monday, hundreds of thousands of people fled Robin Hood and signed up with Charles Schwab and Fidelity from the news reports. Now there are several investigations going on from attorney generals from various states and the SCC is also investigating uh, Robin Hood. Robin Hood may incur millions of dollars in litigation, federal investigation, Senate hearings, individual lawsuits. This is going to lead to a, a tremendous influx of bad publicity and lack of trust, not to mention the millions of accounts they are losing because of this fiasco. See, Robin Hood has been bombarded from many angles. The question is, will it kill its prospect of taking it to an IPO? Will it cast the demise of Robin Hood or Robin Hood will recover and become a much stronger and a much better platform for the millennials. What do you think? Let's hear your opinion, especially the millennials. We want to know what you think. Thank you so much for watching and please, please do subscribe to our channel.